Hello and welcome, follow subscribers and other racing fans. Today, with another episode of Setup 101, with the newly introduced Aston Martin V8 GTE car, which came with the Aston Martin expansion pack, as well as many other Aston Martins. But in this Setup 101, we'll concentrate on this wonderful GTE car on the track. At the start, Circuit de 24 Heures du Mans. Okay, let's jump right into it. Again, I use a qualifying session, 90 minutes, to get the car working. I guess first thing we will do for Le Mans getting all out on the wings. That means. Oh, there are opponents in it actually. Not sure why they are there. I think I didn't set them. Well, then it's not so alone. <laughs> it's a nice, nice thing, I guess. And let's see. Tuning setup. As I said, first thing we will do is actually, okay, actually it will be reducing the fuel load <clears throat> for two laps should be okay for testing purposes. And we'll also open up the restrictor to the max, of course. When we are driving the car competitively and there is no setup restriction, we will use the maximum restrictor. And now we also... Where is it? Oh, yeah. My personal setting, as you know, I'm always increasing the steering ratio a little bit. Then we will be reducing the camber to... A the minimum value, which is 0 0.9 in the GTE. Maybe the devs reacted on the 0, 0.0 exploit with that as a initial reaction. But as I also said earlier, we will have kind of a fix for that in the future with a patch. But nobody knows when this will be coming. <coughs> Also, yeah, the wings, the wings, there are the wings down to zero. We don't need to discuss that on Le Mans. The second sector, it, it might be a little bit more technical, but you need zero downforce with it. That's just, just what you need, okay? <clears throat> uh, coming with that. I think we can decrease the right height a little bit because without the added downforce the car will be a little bit higher anyway at least under speed so we'll see how much we can go down here which is two millimeters, so no problem at all. Two millimeters down is our in initial settings. And with that, we're going out and see what the car is doing. Pretty sure I have to lower the tire brushes as well because of the long straights. Tires are getting cold. And what do we do when we have cold tires? Yes. We're decreasing the tire pressure. Brake balance, maybe I need to uh, um, change that as well because I will be driving without ABS in this test. Why is that, you ask? Yeah, that's why. That's because the GTE car usually does not have ABS when you are on real assist. 
as a GTE car it only has traction control. So that's it. First thing we will need to check is if our gears are long enough. So let's go out and check and test that. As always I'm using the bonnet cam as the first setting and then I'm going I'm going with control and K to adjust my camera position to a more realistic between glass and steering wheel option. My initial thoughts on this car, I already drove some laps around Bathurst with it, are quite okay. It is on default setup a little bit more understeering than the S and GT3. But it wasn't quite slower than the GT3 car. Also not faster, but well. Okay, as you can see we are in the limiter already, so that's the first thing we do. Returning to pit <coughs> and increasing our gearbox final drive. Let's see if we can... Oh, actually the transmission, the gears are freely changeable. So for fine-tuning we can change the gears click by click, which is not possible in the GT3 cars. They are much more restricted in this... Okay. We, are, we only have one click up, it looks like. At least the value isn't changing anymore with the second click, so... Okay, maybe we have... We actually have to increase the 6th gear or the lengthen the 6th and the 5th gear as well later. Go out again, slowly through the pits. Ah, I'm actually activating the telemetry so you can see what is going on there. Car is really stiff <coughs> in default setup. So we see torque is also reduce, uh, declining quite early in this car, so shifting up earlier is the way to go. Power is increasing of course, 290, looks like the final, the, the final drive, the final gear we chose was the right one. <coughs> we are hitting 292 kilometers per hour, so that's quite okay. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> okay, the sec second ch chicane is always my problem. I'm always breaking too early or too late for that. <coughs> it's 
So, maximum power around 460. First gear in this corner. <coughs> think it's also possible to take it in the second gear. Actually, car already feels quite fine. Whoa, the brakes are... I mean, I'm not used to braking without ABS, so it could, could totally be me. However, I think the brakes are a little bit too good for the car at the moment. I'm locking up quite heavily. I will be giving it one more rear bias. Well, I think that was the wrong direction. It's important to stay on the inside and the Porsche curves there. Didn't manage that too well because my wheel kind of came off, my steering wheel. <laughs> wow, that car takes the curves really well. <coughs> so. No problem there. Also, tire temps are quite high. Whoops, a little bit overshooting there. For the people wondering if I'm a little bit too slow here. Whoops, now I cut the track. Yes, I'm not really used to Le Mans. <clears throat> we didn't drive it too often in the past, so... Sorry for lacking pace and speed. <coughs> but the setup 101 is more about setting up the car and not the... Uh, Getting the best lap times out of it, so... Whoa. That was too fast. Um, <clears throat> what you can say now is that the rear tire temps could be a little bit higher. And the brake temps could be a little bit higher too. <clears throat> Also, the oil and water temps are really low, so we are closing the radiator a little bit, I think. Did the tuning setup. Front tire pressures were actually quite fine. We have to think about the track temperature is 42 degrees because I chose the date in July. <clears throat> so, if you are driving in colder conditions, you might reduce the tire pressures even more, however, for the moment, for me, it's okay to just set it to a 1.8 in the rear. Now I will be reducing the tire pressure a little bit. Don't do that if you have enough feeling in your brake foot and you don't, you, you don't uh, lock up the tires too often, so then you don't need to reduce the brake pressure. It's just me, because I can't drive the car correctly. Then we are choosing, we, we, are, we are trying 58 brake bias now, so a little bit more rear bias. We don't want to lock up the rear tires of course, but um, that helps a little bit if you are having lockups on the front, so. Okay, reducing the brake ducts a little bit to 50. 
now the brake mapping actually the car could turn in a little bit more in off throttle situations so I will be reducing that to 5 not to the least amount this time 5 should be enough for me for the Mong so I think 6 gear was okay it was not it was certainly not in the limiter so I'm I'm just leaving the gears now <clears throat> Next thing we will do are uh, reducing the radiator to about 25. Let's see if this turns out well enough. Maybe for a race I would open it up again. However, in this warm conditions, hot conditions, we have to say 80 degrees water temp, it's, it's quite low. So totally, totally fine to reduce the radiator so much. <clears throat> Everything else is okay, I guess. I th I still think the car is a little bit too stiff all around with the springs and everything. However, that also helps to keep the car on track with the aerodynamics because if the car is not um, moving too much, the aerodynamics uh, do not get disturbed. So. That's, that might actually help with the with the arrow grip in faster corners, which we have much of in Le Mans. <clears throat> okay, last thing we can do, I think we are reducing the rear toe in by one. Maybe that gets us one or two kilometers per hour on the straight. And... <clears throat> We don't need the setting for the stability of the car. Usually you, you would increase it to make the car more stable under braking situations and stuff like that. But we don't really need that at the moment. So, okay. <clears throat> Weight bias dis distribution should be totally fine now. And we are going out for another lap. Maybe... I will use a little bit more fuel to drive another lap. Okay. Take 28 with us. That should be fine. <clears throat> 4 minutes 2 seconds is the fastest AI driver with a Mass 3 dispense. I think we should, should be... Uh, under four minutes with a good lap. fine a little bit unstable through this first corners because there are some bumps a little bit unfortunate that we have traffic in front of us now because Well, let's see how fast we can go with the slipstream. 295, 96, 97. I was too fast again <laughs> because I was looking for the speed. <coughs> Interesting. It looks like we can go 300 km per hour with this car or almost 300 km per hour. Whoops, there he is. Didn't see him. He's actually faster on the straights. 
was quite hard to overtake him. I'm still not sure where he is. However, <laughs> in the next video I will show you a new app which is on the forums, which is hot discussed on the forums now. It's a spotter app. I will go into detail in, in my next torque video. It's it's a really nice, really, really nice app. You will love it. So we are now at 94 degrees oil temp and 86 water temp. With numbers like that, I tend to decrease the temps even more, uh, the radiator. Her times are now even through all four tires. Let's see how this looks like after the Porsche curves, which are quite heavy on the tire. Well, and I, I missed the shift to the left. As you can see, rear tires are now a little bit hotter. Whoops! Almost missing the final chicane here. And we have traffic again. <laughs> Next time without AI opponents again, I think. Or what do you say? This question goes to your viewers. so close to him that I actually had to shift down a gear because I was crashing into him almost and I had to emergency brake. <coughs> Let's cruise my lap of course. And you see the SLS is still faster on the straights. Although I'm in the slipstream. Oh and I forgot to brake again. Stupid me. I need my rear mirror for a moment. He wants to go past again. <laughs> no, I don't want to let you. Whoops. Breaking a little bit earlier. I'm actually totally okay with the brake balance, so 58 should be okay for Le Mans. That's my. That's what I am getting from that. Although driving in the slipstream of that SLS, our temperatures didn't go over 92 degrees in the water, so that's totally okay for for the qualifying. For a race, please give the radiator another 10% opening. Oh, 
because the engine could be a little bit too hot over the course of a whole race. Brake clamps, as you can see, are fine. on the throttle there. Whoops! And there goes my rear. I mean this lap is invalid anyway. But on the Porsche cross my rear totally went away this time. I think we can take the first chicane in the third, the second in the second gear. <coughs> okay, let's drive one clean lap. Maybe a little bit too conservative on the brakes there, however. I wanted a really clean lap. No! It was not clean. <coughs> I also hit one of the small little hazards there which got me 3% uh, aerodynamic damage, so be sure not to hit that. Try to stay within the white lines. Actually, I think the rear is a little bit too uh, stable. So we will increase the rear anti-roll bars, the rear sway bars, at a little bit, one notch or something like this. A little bit too fast on the right part of this chicane now. However, really nice car to drive, I really like it. still have problems a little bit with my left foot breaking without ABS, I'm just not used to it. I mean, I totally know what I need to do, but it gets some laps to get used to it. It needs some laps to get used to it. <clears throat> It's not like the car is totally easy to drive, no, not that you think that. It's quite a handful, but um, it feels really safe. I think it's... I The, the feeling is comparable to cars like the C4. Nailed the left part of this corner now. And the final chicanes. 
third gear as I said, wonderful. Second gear cutting a little bit, but not illegally. And our lap time is at 3.56. I have no idea if this is good or not. Because I am driving not too much on Le Mans as I told you. So, brake pressures okay now, um, tire temperatures are also okay. However, let's see where. Okay, this is the, the rear sway bar and one notch up. Okay, it's only one Newton per millimeter. That means I will give it two notches. See how this turns out. Everything else is pretty much okay. I wouldn't go as far as making the car even stiffer. However, that might give you advantages in a race. For example, when the temperatures of the track are a little bit cooler and you need the car to roll a little bit more to, uh, to uh, a little bit more to get more temperatures in the tire you might consider to stiffen up the springs by one click and the sway bars accordingly by one two three clicks that could make your car a little bit hotter uh, the tires a little bit hotter and the car even faster through the fast corners Okay, that's it for now, I think. Just go out and track one lap and test if it's still drivable. A little bit afraid of this fast right hander. I will tell you exactly where I mean. However, not too afraid. Also here, second turn. But car doesn't really feel worse than before. Okay, this is how you nail this corner. Maybe a little bit too much off throttle from me, but the line was okay. Let's see how fast we can get without any slipstream and help. So 292 ah, screwed up the chicane but don't worry <laughs> so without slipstream we uh, we cannot get up to 300 kilometers per hour problems with that but it's not the car or the setup it's me because I'm turning in too late shame on me Driving alone here at Le Mans is a little bit boring because the corners are not that difficult to take. Of course in races it's a huge amount of fun because if you have some 
slipstream action going on. Okay. That was the corner I worried <laughs> about. But no problem. The rear was stable. Whoops. A little bit unstable here. My line was not smooth, em smooth enough in this case. So, all in all, I'm pretty much okay with the setup now. We didn't change too much. That means that Casey or whoever physics developer worked out the inertial setup. He did a pretty good job. It's also a safe inertial setup for Le Mans. He already said just put down the aerodynamic, go for it, and I think he's pretty much right. So, I think that's it for now. Oops. Mr. Pit Andrew here. I think that happened to me the last time too. I say thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye. Okay. Now let's go. Fast lap. Breaking on the outside a little late. However, hitting the apex and on the throttle again. Was quite was quite okay.